Hello, and welcome to the Women of Ambition podcast. Today, I've decided to add in a new segment. We're going to be doing this after every interview, so every other week, where I'm going to sit down and kind of digest all the knowledge that was dropped on by our interview from the week before. So this week, I will be digesting Dr. Trina Boyce's interview from last week that was simply fantastic. I want to focus on the main takeaways from each guest interview and talk about how I've begun to implement each of those takeaways into my life as just one example for all the listeners to th kind of think about. And I'm sure everyone's takeaways are going to be slightly different and the way you implement them will be slightly different. But in the spirit of using myself as an example, um, I want to work through three different takeaways today and talk about what that has meant in my life. I'm going to quickly interject here and apologize for the little bit of crinkling noise that appears a few seconds throughout the podcast. A um, few seconds here, a few seconds there. Hopefully it's not too distracting. I traveled with all of my gear this weekend to a conference that I talk about in this episode, and unfortunately my microphone got slightly damaged. There's a loose wire somewhere. I'm not eating a toffee in the background. It's my microphone and I'm very sorry about that, but I think the message still comes across really clearly, so I appreciate your patience in this episode. Thank you. And here we will proceed with the three key takeaways from Dr. Trina Boyce. The first one is setting expectations for myself and my impatience. One thing I am learning over and over again is that I am an extremely passionate person, and I am also extremely impatient. I expect to reach my big dreams and goals right now, and I would like to pour all of my time and energy into accomplishing those dreams now. And that simply is not possible. <laughs> I need perspective and I need a reality check. Dr. Boyce reminded us that timing is everything. I will not always have babies or kids at home like I have for the last 10 years. My youngest is now two and a half, and I can tell you my oldest is 10, and those 10 years went by really, really quickly, but they were sowed throughout with discontent and frustration at the slowness and the pace that I had to move at as a mother and as having the care of my children being my top priority. The pace at which I could accomplish my goals was very, very frustrating, but children grow up. They're not always small, and knowing that is really helpful in those moments where I feel frustrated. Even just today, I took my two-year-old to a Let's Play music class, which is a group music class. And every Wednesday, <laughs> the timer goes off at 9.30, and I am always surprised that it's time to take her to her class every single week. And I think about, oh, maybe I just won't go this week. I have so much to do. But I purposefully set up that time with her to kind of be our one-on-one -on -one time this year because I do have so many other things going on, and I'm traveling more. I'm working more, she's doing preschool, we're very busy. And so I said, no, this is my priority. This is the time I've set aside. And we went to class and it was wonderful. It's only a half an hour class. And taking that half an hour with her and being really present in that moment, I can be mom of the year, like Dr. Boyce said, and then I can come back here during her school and get lots of work done and be, you know, podcasting woman. So remembering that, remembering the priorities. I won't always have babies at home and doing one thing at a time has been really helpful. Um, if you're a student, you won't always be a student. I remember what that was like being in high school, being in college, wanting to work on a writing career and feeling like I had uh, all these distractions, these courses I had to take that maybe I didn't choose into or they weren't directly applicable to me. Um, I can write a really good essay based on an anthology of a classic text, but that's not really where I wanted to, to be spending my time and my energy. Um, so remembering, okay, school will be over. I won't always be working on things that aren't as important to me. Another thing about timing, I have gone through waves with my autoimmune diseases where I have not been in a healthy place or I have been extremely exhausted and or waiting for a new medication or a new treatment to kick in or testing <laughs> new medications and new treatments, hoping they kick in. Um, I am on bed rest with each of my babies and 
remembering that that is a temporary situation was really helpful to me at the time. And now moving forward, when I do have waves of exhaustion and needing to rest in bed, maybe it's not full bed rest, but I'm still not accomplishing my goals. Um, reminding myself that this is temporary, that my autoimmune is getting better. I'm getting better at handling it. My doctors are getting to know me more. And it, this is temporary. I won't always be in bed exhausted because history has shown that I need to lay down for a little bit and rest my body in order to not have burnout. And then I'm re-energized and I can go be awesome again. I love that Dr. Boyce built on what Alyssa Holbrook said in episode two. Um, Alyssa said, you can pursue as many things as you like. It'll just move a little bit slower. And Dr. Boyce built on that and said, yes, you can pursue it all, just not at the exact same moment. You'll have to stretch out the timeline, choose what to work on in different timelines. So she said that she had a day of the week for different projects and that her family knew that ahead of time. Or she had seasons where she's pushing out a book or a new course and everyone knew, okay, it's not going to be like this forever. I tend to think whatever's happening right now is how it's going to be forever. If I haven't been able to take care of myself as a mother and do some self-care, I think, oh my gosh, I never get self-care time. If I am in a really, really busy season with my kids and I'm focusing on their school and figuring out 504s and IEPs and accommodations and tutoring and all these things, I think, oh my gosh, I spend my whole life focusing on my children's education. None of that's true. <laughs> that's coming from a place of, of feeling a lack of balance, but also thinking very much in the moment instead of having that perspective of, my children are not always going to be in elementary school. Um, we won't always have the coronavirus and be uh, quarantined like we were a few weeks ago. This will end and the next season will come. And I can do things now that will help prepare me for that season, but I cannot jump to that season. And I don't want to because I want to be here with my family. I want to be here with whatever health stuff I'm going through. This whole process is, is important and it's helping me build myself. So as I set those expectations, I can talk to my impatience and say, hey, you're really passionate. You really wanna get this done now. It's not realistic for you to think you're gonna pour all of your energy into 10 different things because it's not possible. And also you value things that are outside of these projects. And so you are gonna put your personal health first and you are gonna put your children in your family first and you are going to put you know managing life above these projects and that's okay and knowing that i have all these balls to juggle they can still all get done i don't have to abandon any one of them but i need to lower the expectation for myself a little bit and say oh it's going to take a little bit longer and that's okay and if it's not okay then maybe i need to reprioritize and see what i can adjust but giving myself a break and cutting myself that slack, I think is, is everything that um, Dr. Boyce was talking about. And she's an example, as are many women, of people who were able to keep aligned with their values, raise their families and grow their career at a pace that was healthy for them, and be able to also buckle down and focus on one thing at a time, knowing that I won't always be pushing a book out for publication I won't always be going to conferences every weekend. This is just what my particular October has looked like. It's been a very, very busy month. And then being able to remind my children of that has been really helpful. So I'm really grateful for that takeaway. Um, the second one is owning my energy. I know that owning my own energy and my needs will bring peace to me, but it also makes space for other people to be themselves. I just went to the She Podcast Live conference in Arizona. It was fantastic. I've posted all about it on Instagram. You're probably sick of hearing about it. Um, but one thing that happened there a lot was I met, every single person I met there was amazing. I think we had 300 people, 
um, and then 5,000 total virtual attendees um, and in person, but several hundred women that I got to meet in person this last weekend over like four days. Every single woman was incredible. Every single woman was passionate. Every single one had a podcast and a different angle to their podcast and different gifts and styles and skills. Uh, frequency of publications. Uh, some had a really extensive show notes and transcriptions because um, we all want to be really accessible and beautiful websites and collaborations planned like a year in advance, extensive sponsoring, really fancy equipment. And it would have been really, really easy for me to say, oh my gosh, they're so much better than I am. Oh my gosh, they have a way better setup. They have a much bigger audience. They have more downloads. Um, their style is so polished and refined. I need to be like that. Or, you know, they're, they're a doctor in their field. They're speaking with such authority. Oh my gosh, who am I to be speaking about ambition and womanhood? Um, I, it would have been really easy to compare myself. And instead, I feel like we collectively did this as a group. I feel like we collectively were celebrating our differences and celebrating our different styles and our different personalities. Not every podcaster is an extrovert or an introvert. Um, we're not all the same flavor. And in owning my show and what works for me completely and accepting myself, I was able to make space to just be happy for other people and learn from them and grow and get lots of ideas that I hope will bring lots of value to all of you holding space for others to move at different speeds, especially our friends who might, their ambition might look different than us, or they just might not be ambitious. Because remember, ambition is a neutral trait. And I know for this podcast, we talk a lot about ambition and we get really stoked on it and we get really excited. And I want to encourage women to live into their ambition, but that's not because being ambitious is, is good or the correct way to be. It's just that those women who have ambition, I want them to live fully into it. But for someone who's less ambitious, a friend or a spouse or a coworker, that is okay. It's a neutral trait. They can be exactly what they are and you can be exactly what they are. But sometimes, like what Dr. Boyce was saying, going out to lunch with a friend and talking about all your passion projects, that can maybe be overwhelming to someone else, especially if maybe they have shame for not being ambitious. You remember as women, we can't win. <laughs> we're too much or we're too little frequently. And a lot of us hold that judgment in our hearts. And so when we meet a friend who is doing it differently than us, we might get overwhelmed. And so holding space for others to move at different speeds is just really honoring to, to me and to my friend and allows us to work together and to be friends and to collaborate and be honest about our lives without saying that there's one path that's incorrect or correct or incorrect. Um, everyone's journey is their own and that is okay. I loved what the example that Trina gave of her speaker just saying, hey, the male speaker saying, hey, I have a really feminine energy and it's awesome and this is who I am. And I think when we can do that for ourselves, especially when we're meeting people for the first time, or we're feeling a little insecure. Oh man, that's just like such a relief. And I know that I am loud and I am passionate. And when I care about something, I speak up about it. And so I will let people know that, especially in like a church setting where I have a lot to say, and maybe I'm thinking about it from a different angle than other people. And I can say, Hey, I know that I'm really passionate about this. And this is just who I am and I speak up a lot and I ask a lot of questions, but you're okay doing it your way. And I also try and make room for people to, to have their response and not always take over whatever the conversation is going. Meeting new people and being able to do that in a quick way, I think is a really good skill. And that's something I'm gonna continue to try and hone. One thing that has really helped me with that are the books by Carol Tuttle. She does the living your truth courses and knowing that I am a type three woman who is uh, action oriented, passionate, enthusiastic, more extroverted. And 
someone who will jump into a project and get moving has helped me honor myself, but then honor the other types. There are four types. The other three types who are not that way and saying, hey, you're the okay the way you are. I'm okay the way I am. And we all work together. We need all four of those types to get things done and to grow and learn and be happy. And I can appreciate each of those types of people. So that's owning my energy in order to bring peace to myself and also put other people at peace. The third one, the last one today, is implementing what energizes me. And Dr. Boyce asked the question, what brings you joy? What energizes you? And to look back as a kid. For me as a kid, I liked building businesses and my independence. I've talked about this in the past. I have sold water. I have sold people's flowers from their front yards. <laughs> Pick it from their front yard, put it in my wagon, wheel it up to their front door, knock on the door and try and sell them their own flowers and with, you know, varying levels of, oh, that's so cute to get out of my yard responses. I was a dog walker and a mommy's helper. And all of those things were of my own, my own choice, my own creation, my own desire to go and create a business and be out in the world and help people and make a difference and completely self-driven. And my parents were supportive and they helped, but I was, you know, figuring out how to make flyers on Microsoft Word back on the gigantic computer days and printing those out and taking tape and posting it all around the neighborhood and calling, you know, fielding calls back and forth to make all that happen. And I did that because it was fun for me. It was my project and I liked it. Another thing, being a kid, I loved being creative with my friends. We would make fairy houses, leprechaun houses, um, not just in March, by the way, this was a year round activity art, music, making up dances, hosting parties, performing different kinds of service. I loved doing projects that were creations and experiences for other people, experiences for myself. The third one, sports and activities. I loved playing volleyball and hiking and going to the beach and being active. Now as an adult, I find it really interesting that each of my core values comes from that joy that I had as a child. So I just listed three things from my childhood and each of my three core values is rooted in those things, those joyful things I did as a kid. And so my adult self has taken that joy and taken it a step further. So I enjoy creating independently. I enjoy writing and cooking, art, podcasting, creating content on Instagram and LinkedIn and other places. And that is tied back to that independence and that business mindset, that project creation, money, dog walking, you know, sell you tap water from my front yard. Part of myself as a child, that joy has now turned into this space of creation for me. And that realization has been awesome. Second one, I really enjoy serving in my community um, writing, going to church, serving through my church. Um, I was in the PTO for a long time, um, sharing my thoughts and sharing my businesses in order to provide a service for my community, both paid and unpaid. It's something I spend, I would say, a majority of my time doing because it brings me such joy. And it's, it's also part of the creation process for me. I can create an experience for others and uh, create the type of community that I want to bring my family up in. And the value that that goes back to for me is service. So the first one was independence, the second one service. Third one, I love to accomplish new things and to challenge myself and I love learning. And one of the areas of learning that I spend a lot of my time in personal development. I've also taught myself how to do oil painting. I've taken online marketing classes. I've taken cooking classes. I've done all kinds of, of learning opportunities because I find joy in it. And I find that creativity and creation in one area fuels me in all of my other projects. And so I can go and learn something new and then actually get better at the thing that I'm already working on and I'm already pursuing. So my, those are my 
my three goals, independence, or my three values, independence, service, and growth. And frequently that growth comes in learning and reading and those types of things. And those, each of those three have roots back to my childhood. And I, I knew that, but I hadn't actually stopped and analyzed it until reflecting back with Dr. Boyce. Now, how do I take those things that energize me and, and implement them? I want to feed myself and I want to have some semblance of balance. So I need to carve time out for myself and for my highest priorities. One thing I have done in the last year is take into planning my joy. My husband and I have a term that I made up that I use all the time with him. When I want to do something kind of crazy or I'm trying to describe to him why something that might be mundane to him is amazing to me and I call it scream joy. And scream joy to me is the type of joy where you are just completely delighted in the moment, like a child, laughing happily, screaming happily, singing freely, completely unimpeded. And my goal is to put scream joy into my week because what I found was I was accessing scream joy maybe once a year. How devastating is that? I wasn't unhappy, but the type of joy that makes life worth living, I wasn't seeking. It was happening to me, but I wasn't doing it. I wasn't making it happen for myself. So I have a weekly calendar and I have my three values and I have my scream joy. And I say, okay, I need to practice each of these this week. I'm going to practice independence. I'm going to practice growth. I'm going to practice service and I'm going to practice scream joy. And frequently those can overlap and they do because I have organized my life in a really great way. But I plan it, you know, hours into my week and how am I going to make that happen? I find that choosing the most joyful thing is a great way to exercise my values. So this week, for instance, for independence, I traveled alone to a conference in Arizona in a new city I've never been to. And this sounds dumb, but it checks the box for me. Doing things alone feeds me. So getting a taxi on my own, getting a hotel on my own, staying in it by myself, because I had the opportunity to go with friends or to invite somebody, and I chose not to, because I said, hey, I'm going to be practicing independence for this trip. I'm going to go alone. Uh, flying on an airplane alone, making all my own choices when it comes to eating and what I want to do and what classes I want to take. No compromising for anybody. Compromising is wonderful, right? I'm a mother. I am married. I live in a community. I compromise constantly. But giving myself time to be independent allows me to not have to compromise for anybody. And I'm also an empath, so I know that even when I choose what I want, I still feel the emotions of the people around me if they're disappointed or frustrated or bored or whatever. And even that is just, ugh, I just need a break from that sometimes. And so taking this trip was wonderful. It was uninterrupted time, days on end for me to think in my own head without being interrupted and being able to choose into every single activity. And there were many social events that I chose into and they were wonderful but I left as soon as I wanted to. And I stayed at home by myself in the hotel in the evenings and just thought my thoughts and wrote things down and created things without difference to anybody else. And that was truly wonderful for me. Growth this week, um, networking with new people at the conference really fed my growth, learning from all the classes uh, I love learning. I am a lifetime, lifelong learner, which I always laugh at because that is the tagline for my university that I attended, Brigham Young University. Their goal is to create lifelong learners. And I'm like, oh, holy smokes, it totally worked for me. <laughs> I think I was already this way, but I love learning new things. I relearned how to be amongst a couple hundred people. I did not know anybody there when I attended this event. And I made a whole bunch of new friends. It's wonderful. And after COVID of being around nobody and having no networking experiences besides, you know, social media, which I actually, I did a lot there, but that's a totally different thing, right? 
we've had a lot of physical distance things we've had to relearn coming back into the world. So relearning how to function in a large space with lots of people post COVID, uh, relearning that people are just people. One minute they can get up on a stage and we can talk about how amazing they are and how many books they've written, how many bestsellers they've written, all the amazing people they've interviewed. And, you know, an hour later, they can be sitting next to me in a class learning about, you know, how Clubhouse works and be just as in awe of the speaker as I was of them an hour ago. And remembering to take people off the stages we put them on has been beautiful and wonderful for me. And that's not necessarily something I could have predicted, but I think going forward when I'm planning my growth and I know I have a conference up, I think I might make that a concrete thing to practice. Go up and talk to the people who just taught the class and get to know them and see them as, as my equal and, and as possible friends rather than putting them up on a pedestal. The third one is service. I spent this week learning how to bring my best self to my podcast and serving in particular my listeners. So serving you, thank you for being here. I just spent a lot of money and time learning how to do this better for us and to learn how to serve you. You are the audience I'm serving this week. I really want to access the girl I was not very long ago who was frustrated and confused and shamed for my drive and who needed to be more satisfied in life. And Going to that conference helped me ratchet that down a little bit tighter, helped me find new concrete ways of reaching that girl, that woman, who I was several years ago, and is now going to allow me to access those people and, and help people, which is my, my whole goal here. So that is one way that I planned my goals into my week. Now, scream joy. Scream joy was going on a trip by myself. <laughs> that was my scream joy, not having to worry about anybody else. That was the gift that I gave myself this weekend. And I planned it several months in advance, as you have to do with these things. When I sat down for my week and I said, okay, how am I going to do independence, growth, service, and scream joy? I already had it planned. Now, this next week is looking a little bit different. This week, my independence looks a lot more common. Um, I'm hosting an event for... Uh, speaker at our local library, mostly because I want to hear from him and I want my children to hear from him, Darren Perry, who is a Shoshone tribal leader. I wanted to learn more about that culture and I was delighted when he agreed to come and speak to our community. So I did set that up at the library and invited um, our friends and other homeschooling parents to come and do that. And that was something that I was able to create. I was able to create an experience that didn't exist by myself and then also be able to share everybody else. So that also hits service. I'm providing a service for my community growth. Um, I am doing a therapy session this week and I'm learning about myself. That totally counts. And it's a very concrete way to count. But in, year, in weeks past, it's been reading a chapter of a book or listening to a podcast or taking a particular chunk of time to meditate in nature. So my point is that those key values can be really, really big things that you're doing in your week, or they can be small things. And planning those in and making sure that those are our highest priorities will help balance and feed ourselves so that you don't find yourself like me going months and months without thinking concretely about what am I doing to bring joy into my life? Because I spend so much time creating joyful, wonderful experiences for my family and for my community and for my husband. And I definitely overdo the service category so easily. And so balancing that out with the independence and growth is truly essential to me bringing my best self to the table. I am so grateful for Dr. Boyce and her pointing out the connection between energy and joy and how to actually implement that in her life. She says she puts things on her desks that bring her happiness. I have been doing the same. So this is my this is my little candle. I'm showing the YouTubers here who are watching. I have a candle and I have different intentions and I light that candle. And this candle is one for joy and abundance. And I am intentionally bringing that energy into my life every time I light that candle and I see that candle. I have lots of books on my desk 
that help remind me of all the things that I love to do and I love to learn about. And that's an easy visual reminder. I have all these postcards that we got on our trip to national parks and each one is so beautiful and I loved collecting them and they're just sitting on my desk. And every now and then I look through them and I remember, oh yeah, Congaree National Park, Cuyahoga Valley. I have all these wonderful memories associated with that. And those are just things that are scattered around my desk to help energize me as I sit down to plan my week and my day. I hope you enjoyed these three takeaways from Trina Boyce. Again, quickly, it was setting expectations for ourselves in order to succeed and combat the impatience, owning our energy in order to settle into ourselves and allow connection and allow others to connect back with us, and three, implementing what energizes me. And I am so grateful for those takeaways, and I hope that this new segment has been helpful, and I hope you take this and do your own thing with it, your own version of it. How do these takeaways affect you? What does it look like for your life to think about reframing expectations for time and incorporating more scream joy into your life? Do you know what scream joy is for you? There was a time when I didn't know what scream joy was for me. Sit down and, and write out what brings you that kind of joy. I know jet skiing brings that kind of joy for me. I know riding my bike brings that kind of joy for me. Uh, and I hope that you find those pieces for yourself and realize that you are worth incorporating that into your everyday life just as much as your children are worth going to their piano lessons and you and your husband get a date night. Give yourself time to connect with yourself and your deeper joy. Let me know if this segment has been helpful to you. I will continue to produce these. You can connect with me at womenofambitionpodcast.com. Follow me on Instagram, Women of Ambition Podcast. There I do a lot of surveys and get feedback from listeners. So if you ever have a comment or question, you can go to either of those places. But if you would like to participate in surveys to give feedback uh, to help the future creation of this podcast, I appreciate it. I did that this week and I got some feedback from a lot of people. And I just wanted to say thank you so much. It is so helpful. I really do want to be of service to this community and help and spread female empowerment and joy and self-acceptance and your responses help me better do that and access the people that need to hear my message. So thank you very much. Next week, we are going to be hearing from McKenna Myler and I am so stoked for this one. She is an incredible woman, an incredible young woman. She's a, a very young mother. And I say that because some of the things that she has done in her running career, she has done very pregnant and that is just blows my mind as someone who has to be on bed rest starting at about four months <laughs> to think that there are these awesome women out there that can keep pursuing their goals super inspiring and she is about to run another marathon so we're going to keep an eye on her stay tuned for that next week thanks so much for being here this is the women of ambition podcast i'm your host Alyssa calder hume and I just want to thank all the awesome women out there for being themselves and accepting themselves and sharing this message however you can. Bye.